Let's talk. Everybody praise the Lord. I want to announce to you that in your life, in your family, in your business, everything surrounding you, nothing too hard for our God. He breaks every yoke, heals every sickness, and delivers the oppressed. You want to know, you want to experience that tonight, nothing, absolutely nothing. It's impossible to hide something great is coming in your life. Miracle. I call miracle upon you in your soul, in your spirit, in your body, in the work of your hand, that miracle has now arrived. And you will not live here like you came in Jesus' name. Father, God of heaven, God of earth, creator and maker, of everything your people are here they know you are the god of creation the god of redemption the god of power the god of all possibilities that's why they have come they have come here and all over everywhere the message goes to everyone has come because we know in the depth of our heart nothing absolutely nothing difficult for you tonight you'll make it a night of wonders a night of miracles a night of power a night to move mountains out of every life tonight in jesus name confirm it in every heart thank you lord for the answer in Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we're talking about faith. We're talking about active faith, mighty faith, powerful faith. We're talking about a mountain-moving faith. We're talking about bulldozer faith. Give me a good day. Amen. And everything, whether it's nature, whether it's devil, whether you were born like that, whatever it is, in your soul, in your spirit, in your body, the bulldozer faith, the mountain moving faith, the active faith will activate in your life your own faith. You will overcome and you have your miracle tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Talking about faith, not ordinary faith, active faith, practical faith, miracle working faith, mountain moving faith, active faith. And we're talking about the assurances we have. Assurance that our God, the present God, the perfect God, the omnipotent God, the one that has no impossibility. We have assurances tonight that as we receive the word, believe the word, act on the word, there will be the response from heaven, the miracle from heaven, the yoke-breaking power from heaven, activating and working in your life in jesus name tonight i'm talking to you on the acts and the assurances of active faith the acts you act it out you hear it you see it you believe it you accept it and you live, you act, you pray, you believe, and then you do as if you really believe the acts and the assurances. What we're sure of, what we're sure of, we act out. 
what we really know that we know, we act out. You're sure? Because of that, you act. And you act according to what God has said. And there will be a performance, there will be a fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. In my life. In my life. There will be a performance tonight. There will be a fulfillment tonight. Amen in your life. We're looking at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, that is the one thing he's looking for. Do you believe I can do this? You say, yes, Lord, when Jesus hears that. Do you know in the depth of your heart that I can move the mountain tonight? Yes, Lord. Do you believe that this long-standing problem, that tonight is the night, the supernatural power of God will take it away from you? And you say, yes, Lord. The moment you agree, the moment you affirm, the moment you know in your heart and you express your faith, you express your faith in action. You express your faith in a powerful, wonderful, practical way. This is what they did. The people I'm reading about here, they brought a paralytic man. And there was so much a crowd that they couldn't get in to get him to where Jesus was. And so, they, but they believed all they needed to do was to get the man in the presence of Christ. And they knew once that took place, what has been a long-standing problem, everything will vanish away. So, they thought, they didn't think the thoughts of unbelief. You see, if we think the thoughts of unbelief, we will have the actions of unbelief. If we think the thoughts of unbelief, we will go on the road of unbelief. And the road of unbelief never leads to salvation or to miracle or to power. But they thought, the thoughts of faith. And the thoughts of faith brought the action of faith. They went to the roof of that house. They located Jesus where Christ was. They removed a tile. And they lowered the man and put the man right there in front of Christ. And Jesus said, nobody can go that far in action in faith and not get something from him from heaven when jesus saw their faith he said to the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee and some of the people there who didn't have the understanding of who christ was and what Christ could do, and what the Father had ordained and authorized that Christ, his only begotten Son, could do. They began to say within themselves, how can this man, that was their problem, they saw him as man like themselves, religious man, traditional man, a Jewish man. How can this man just a man forgive the sin of anyone when you have a limited understanding a limited understanding of the name and the power and the might of christ you'll be thinking in your heart how can this happen how can this happen jesus is not ordinary man he is emmanuel i said he is emmanuel God with us. And he says that the Father has the power to give life. He also has the power to give life. He is Christ, the very Son 
of God. And so in verse 11, in verse 11, it says, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. He didn't even have to touch the man. He didn't have to anoint the man with anything. He didn't have to lift up the man. He didn't have to shake the man because of his power. Irresistible power. Because of his power. Healing power. Because of his authority. He only had to say the word. I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, and what do you see there? What word am I looking at? When is it going to happen to you tonight? When you will roll, roll your problems away? When you will he destroy the works of the devil in your life tonight? When will he heal that big problem? Answer. I said, when will he heal that brain problem? When will he take that challenge, long-standing challenge? When will he take it away tonight? And immediately he arose and he took up the bed and went forth before them all. In so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Read that part with me. We never saw it. On this passion, if every time we come before the Lord, what we we'll see is what we have always seen. We have not really come to the presence of the Lord. If every time we worship, every time we pray, every time we read the Bible, every time we interact spiritually, if what we see is what we have always seen, we are becoming traditional. We are not expecting that Christ be mightily present over here to do what we have never, never, never seen. But they said, we never, never saw it in this, on this fashion. When you do what you have never done, when you act the way you have never acted, this is the first time that these four men will come in the presence of Christ. This is the first time they'll climb up the roof and take away a tile. They have never done that before. When you have faith in the Lord like you never had before, when you believe in the Lord like you have never believed before, when you put all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and you focus on Christ like you have never done before, the result is you will see a miracle you have never seen. You'll see power manifestation you never saw. Well, when you believe the Lord and you say, I never saw this, I never expected this, but now I'm expecting what I never expected. I'm praying for what I never prayed for. I'm receiving what I never received. When you have that heart, when you have that mind, you will see in your heart, in your life today, something that never crossed your mind. The power of the Lord will prove to you that nothing is ever too hard for him. We're talking about the acts and the assurances of active faith. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the showing words of power and God's preeminence. God has preeminence over sickness, over evil power, over any challenge we have, over any difficulty we have. God has 
the preeminence. And when you understand that, and you see, yes, I see problem there, I see sickness there, I see infirmity there, I see weakness, I see whatever, and I see the pressure, but I come to the one that has preeminence over everything, literally, everything on earth, everything underneath the earth, anything in the sky, anything in the bush, I come to the God that has preeminence. Your problem, uh, asking permission, let me go. Let me go. Because problem cannot stand where you exalt the preeminence of the Almighty, of the Creator, of the Redeemer, the assuring world of power and God's preeminence. Number two, the active walk into the performance of God's promises. Actually, when we come to the Lord, we literally walk into the performance, walk of faith. The work of assurance, knowing that this is what he has said. And you must fulfill it and by your confession, by your thoughts, by everything that you think about. And by the way you act, the way you position yourself, you literally walk into the performance of miracle. Tonight, I say tonight, you walk into the performance of the miracle. Number three is the activated wonder. Activated wonders. Wonder is there all the time. In the presence of God, wonder is there all the time. And, but it's like a dog is sleeping. Everything is quiet, no backing, nothing at all until you activate and you wake up that dog. But when people say, let the sleeping dog lie, don't activate anything, don't do anything, don't command anything. Let things go on the way they have always gone then miracles will not be activated. Wonders will not be activated. But when you come and the faith in you that was dormant, that was sleeping, that was quiet, that faith activated, miracle must happen. And in the presence of God, as we come, we have activated wonders through the prayer we pray in God's presence. Tonight is your night. The Lord will touch you. The Lord will turn everything around that had been dormant in your life in Jesus' name. Look at number one. Look at number one there. Number one, the assuring word of power and God's preeminence, assuring words of power. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, when, when the word of the king is, tell me, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? God is the king of kings. Christ is the king of kings. And when he speaks the word of forgiveness into your life, Nobody can ask him, what doest thou? When he speaks the word of healing, the word of deliverance into your life, when he speaks the word to move your mountain, no matter how long it's been there, nobody, no devil, no demon, no man can say, what doest thou? What does that mean? He has final authority. Over your problem, he has final authority. Over your sickness, he has final authority. Over your predicament, he has final authority. Because where the king is, there is power. You see here tonight, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And because he said, he is here as king. He is here as healer. 
He is here as Redeemer. He is here as the mountain mover. And because He is here, He speaks. And where the word of the King is, there must be power manifestation in your life. In Jeremiah chapter 32, Jeremiah chapter 32, we're reading from verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. If you could think about it, about that, for some time, and then compare his power to the power that can heal you, the heavens and the earth. The stars, the sun, the moon, and all the planets in their different orbits. And they make them so orderly that they don't collide. And there is, there's no collision that will kind of explode anything here on earth. And he created the whole earth. And he created the seas, the ocean, everything in the proper uh, proportion. Think about that. And he creates all the, every blade of grass. And as you look at the blade of grass under a microscope, you see a wonderful, powerful symmetry and design. And this is the God that created, that made the heaven and the earth by his great power. When you think of that, then you understand if he can do that and he has done that in my life, there's nothing too hard for him. In your life, there's nothing too hard for him. By the way, do you remember how he created the heavens and the earth? He spoke one sentence. Let there be light Tell me, there was light. And all the creation of God with his word. He didn't have to go there for hundreds and thousands and millions of years trying to uh, evolve evolution. Trying to do this and that. He spoke, it was done. And your life tonight, he will speak. He will use the person you see in front of you as his microphone. Yeah. But he seems talking to you. He seems speaking to you. And he speaks a word, your sins are forgiven. Yeah. He speaks a word, your, your healing is guaranteed. Yeah. I have it tonight. It says, and there is nothing to hatch for thee. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Any flesh sitting down, standing there today? I said any flesh sitting or standing there today? Where are they? Is your God? Is your creator? Is your healer? It's your deliverer. The God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And since you have said no, you'll find tonight nothing, no problem that you brought is ever going to be hard for him in Jesus' name. Look at... Um, Point number two here. Point number two is the active walk into the performance of God's promises. When God makes a promise, he wants to fulfill the promise. He has a mind that he's going to fulfill the promise. Has he made any promise of salvation? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. That promise will be fulfilled for you. By his stripes, I am healed. You didn't say that properly. By his stripes, I am healed. 
Will you be healed tonight? Yes. If that thing is inside, liver, kidney problem, if that thing is inside, fibroid, and cancer, if that thing is inside, and you say, I feel it this way, at the mention of the name of Jesus tonight, all your pain, all your sickness, everything gone in Jesus' name. We activate the work of faith by what we say with our mouth. We activate faith by the way we think in our heart. And we don't exaggerate the problem, lift up the problem, make the problem so big and our God so small. No, we begin to think about the power of God, about the possibilities in God, about the goodness of God, about the promise of God, and about the fact that our problem, so to say, they're so tiny, like a little fly, that even you can kill that fly and throw it away. And all those flies of demonic oppression, and the flies of sickness, the flies of disease, they are healed tonight. You will feel it in your body. The healing, the deliverance, and you say, I've been hearing of miracles, I got one. I've been hearing of that people testifying, I got mine. Confirm in your life in Jesus' name. And so he tells us in Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 9. Then the Lord put forth a sand and touched my mouth. He'll touch your mouth. I said, he'll touch your mouth. When he touches our mouths, the things we used to say, we don't say them anymore. When he touches our mouths, all the cannot, cannot, in our lives, everything will evaporate away. I cannot, because I'm a little child, that one will vanish away. I cannot because I am sick, that one will vanish away. I can't do that because I am lame, that one will vanish away. And the Lord then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I have put my words in thy mouth. What does that mean? I knew the word, but it wasn't his mouth. He learned the word, it wasn't in his mouth. He heard the word, but it wasn't in his mouth. When he had the word, what he was speaking out was different from the word. But now the Lord said, I have put my word in your mouth. The meaning is that word is now there. If you say it, it will be done. It's no more in the prophet's mouth, in the preacher's mouth, only in God's mouth is now in your mouth. Are you determined? By pronouncing, by repeating the word in your mouth, I am healed. Heaven will confirm it. I am delivered. Heaven will confirm it. Now, you speak the word in your mouth, in your mouth, in your mouth. And you don't say, I'm dying. Be careful. You are not dying. You are living. Uncle died at this age, cousin died at this age, 
Mama died at this stage. I've got to the stage. I am going. No, that's not the word you put in your mouth. Speak the word that God has put in your mouth. And revival will come to every part of your being in Jesus' name. Behold, I have put my words, not their words, my words. I have put my word, not your family's word, the doctor's word, the nurse's word, the medical exam word. You have the word higher than anybody is telling you you will live. You will be revived. And all those sicknesses and crawling things, they are off your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, see, I have this day set thee over the nations. I have, tell me the next word, this day. You know our problem? We come to the revival. We come to the night of supernatural wonder. And he puts a word in our heart that we didn't have before we came. He puts a word in our mouth that we didn't have before we came. And he puts an authority, an anointing upon us that we didn't have before we came. But... The unfortunate thing is the people still go on saying what they were saying. When the Lord had not touched them, they go back to the past and the things they used to say and the things they used to do and the thoughts they used to think, they're still thinking the same thought. No, no, that's, that's not right. When he said, now this day, I'm doing something to you that you didn't have before. Then you come up to that level. And you act and you stay the same at the level you ought to say, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. To root out. To root out. Anything that stands in your way, to root out. Anything that wants to say, who do you think you are? Well, he says, I am a new man. I have a new word in my mouth that was not there before. I have a new position, a new power. Who are you? I'm a man now, I'm talking for you. I'm a woman now, I'm talking for you of authority. That's all your amen. And so when you realize this is what I have done for you this day, you go out, you will root out. You will pull down. You will destroy every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your body, in your heart, in your business, in your profession, in your education. Everything the Heavenly Father has not planted, you'll not be calling on other people. Now the authority is with you. Yeah. Root it out. Pull it down. And destroy that thing. And it is destroyed in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then to throw down. You see, all those things, once you say, this will not continue in my life. I wrote it out. <laughs> you know, people are waiting there. Uh, people will not allow me to, you know, make progress. And they always put that stumbling block in my way. Why don't you wrote it out? Tonight, why don't you pull it down? Tonight, why don't you throw it down? Your life will be according to the plan of heaven. It will not be according to what somebody, you know, will not allow him to go beyond this point in education. 
who is that? When we have the performance of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and the preeminent God has made us, and He has said, This is where I am taking you. Anybody between you and that high point in your life, rooted out tonight. Pulled down tonight. Destroyed tonight. The enemy will not determine the level you stop. God and you. God in you. You in Christ. Already, you have the power. Destroy them. And throw it down. And to build, you will build your life. You will build your family. You will build the work of your hand. I'm looking at you there, you will succeed. I said, you will succeed. Believe the word. Believe your own utterance and believe what you say and believe what you sing. You're at choir tonight. God bless you. As you sang, what a mighty God we serve. And you sang that nothing, absolutely nothing. It's too hard for him. You blessed the church. Let those same words bless you. So that you are not just lifting up other people. You yourself, by the song of your mouth, by the word of your mouth, you are lifted up in Jesus' name. And so you have that word that says he will make you build and make your plant. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what says thou? Every time you read the Bible, your quiet time, what says thou? About yourself, about the world. Every time you come to the night of supernatural wonders, what seest thou? What do you see now? Do you see miracle coming your way? Do you see power in your life? Do you see authority that even the devil cannot contradict? Every time, every time, every time the question comes, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod and an almond tree. I see a rod of an almond tree. Your, your life will not remain a dry rod. It shall become a fruit-bearing rod and branch in Jesus' name. Your wife will not remain a dry rod. She will be a fruit-bearing wife in Jesus' name. Your son, your daughter, will not be a dry rod. Will not stop at the level of education where you stopped. No matter how far you went, how high you went, that your son will go beyond you. That your daughter will go beyond you. And nobody now, nobody now that you are spending your time with will be a dry rod. They'll be fruit bearing. I said they'll be fruit bearing. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, and then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen 
well. When I see a miracle coming my way, God says to me, Thou hast seen well. When I see the dry rod of the past becoming fruit bearing rod, and he asked me, What do you see? And I say, I see fruitfulness. He said, You have seen well. Anybody see well there tonight? And it says, For I will hasten my word to perform it. God will hasten his word to be performed in your life even tonight in Jesus' name. The word of salvation he'll perform. The word of healing he'll perform. The word of wonders he will perform in your life in Jesus' name. Performance. Performance. Where will that performance be tonight? Really, 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 seriously, not seriously. Where will the word be performed tonight? Confirmed in Jesus' name. We're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the activated wonders through prayers in God's presence. We are in God's presence. And the Lord will activate wonders in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Every promise that has been lying dormant there, the Lord will wake up that promise into your life tonight in Jesus' name. Everything he has injected into your life, the goodness of God, the power of God, the great possibilities we have in God that have been there. And you know it is sleepy somewhere there in your mind. And if it can only wake up, everything will become all right tonight in your life. Steady, steadfast salvation in your life. Yeah. Dynamic healing. Demonstrated healing. Yeah. Wonders of deliverance activated in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. In the presence of God, always there are wonders. The ocean of wonders never dry up. In the presence of God, the great power for wonders never dries up in the presence of God. Uh, you know, it's, um, you know, people that don't understand God, they say the God of wonders, what he used to do, the God of power, what he used to do. No, there is no past tense in God. I said there's no past tense in God. Yesterday, today, and forever. He makes his wonders to come alive in every life in Jesus' name. Uh, look, at, look at Psalm 16. I'm reading from verse 11. Thou will show me. Wonderful. Thou will show me. I, I wanted you to say that for yourself. Uh, you see, those people in Bible days, that's how David killed Goliath. That's how the rod of Moses opened the Red Sea. That's how the rod brought water out of the rock. Because they personalized the promise of God. And the performance came to them. Uh, they didn't say, the Lord will show us. The Lord will show them in the generation to come uh, when uh, after we have gone. No, at this time, the Lord will show me. Yeah. Say it. The Lord will show me. Yeah. Thou will show me the path of life. Not the path of death. Not the path of depression, stress. Distress, uh -uh. from tonight, all that is gone. Yeah. 
the path of suffering, sickness, all that is gone. The path of regrets and remorse and reproach, uh-uh, that one tonight is gone. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence, in thy presence. Where are you tonight? In thy presence. I say, where are you tonight? You know, some people come to church and they say, I am under oppression. I am under sickness. I'm under a curse. In God's presence, can there be a cause that will remain? Tell me. In God's presence, can, can there be another power coming from any other place that will abide? No. Change your thought. Change your language. Your life will come from the bottom of the sea and come to the very top. You remember Jonah was right there down deep in the bottom of the sea. But when he said, salvation is of the Lord. And he said, I will remember and I will put my prayer, I will send my prayer to his throne. He came from the bottom, he came to the top. You are coming from the bottom. And the fish, even the fish, he couldn't eat him up. You know, the fish just uh, discovered, and look at this, uh, this one will be sweet meat. Your, your body will not be sweet meat in their mouth. Yeah. And couldn't even hurt him. And Jonah did not have to go for, you know, rehabilitation somewhere. After it came out of that fish, when you live here, you don't need any other rehabilitation. Everything has taken place. And so, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And there are pleasures forevermore. Pleasures forevermore. Pleasures forevermore. Everything good you have missed in the past, Pleasures forevermore. A new day has begun for you. New life has come for you. The Lord is blessing you right now. He's turning everything around in your life right now. In Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Look at verse 19 there. It says, repent, therefore. Now, that repent doesn't mean that, you know, you begin to cry and cry and cry. And that's not repentance. Just to change your mind. Just turn around. You've been looking at this direction, and the direction is not bringing peace of mind. It's not bringing victory in your life. It's not bringing joy in your life. Repent. That just means turn away. You're looking at something that gives you depression, that gives you kind of weakness, kind of, that gives you like, uh, you know, you, uh, almost you are going to die. That gives you unbelief, as if God will never forgive you. Turn away from there and turn this other direction and your forgiveness is guaranteed in Jesus name your salvation is guaranteed in Jesus name and your healing your deliverance and your victory and your dominion guaranteed in Jesus name repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when you come to the Lord he blots out all your sins how many sins? He wipes them out. He cleans them up. And he doesn't even allow the remembrance of those sins anymore. And if you need that, all you need to do is turn around and face the Lord. And you have that in Jesus' name. And also, also, also your sickness, your sickness will be blotted out. All the consequences of sin will be blotted out. Everything you carry about, bad luck and this and that, everything blotted out tonight in Jesus' name. Then it says, 
when the times of refreshing, look at that, when the times of refreshing shall come from where? Talk, say it out. When refreshing, you've been dry, you've been sorrowful, it's like famine is going on in your life and in your family. No food to eat. And you look here, they say we're in the same condition too. You've come to the presence of the Lord tonight. Go back home and receive abundance. Because we've come to the presence of the Lord. Everything negative, taken away. Everything oppressive, taken away. Everything that makes us cry and cry and cry, taken away in Jesus' name. Everything that makes you to say, I wonder, I, why this, why this? Everything blotted out tonight in Jesus' name. Because, 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 because the times, plural, the times, plural, of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. For you. For me. You got it today. For me. It will come in Jesus' name. Now, when I tell you to stand up, you will stand, don't stand yet, you will stand like you never stood. When I tell you, now pray, open your mouth and ask the Lord, you will pray and you will ask for what you have never asked for. When you stand, you stand not like somebody who is barely living, but almost collapsing. Look up. You stand. Stand right. Stand up. Stand well. And stand with confidence. Stand with joy, knowing that every problem you brought, every sickness you brought, every depression you brought, every negative thing you brought, everything is cleared away from your life now in Jesus' name. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, what are you getting tonight? Why are you here tonight? What's the challenge? What's the problem that you have weighing you down today? Call upon the name of the Lord. With him, nothing shall be impossible. In him, no regret, no remorse. No loss in his presence, no sickness can stand, no power can stand. You come to the presence of the Lord today. There's salvation in his presence, there's power in his presence. There's deliverance in his presence. Miracle in his presence. Authority in his presence. Tell him, tell him, tell him. What seest thou? You don't see barrenness anymore. You don't see fruitlessness anymore. You see well. You see salvation, you see well. You see forgiveness, you see well. Everything good, every good thing that you see will come upon your life. You see healing, you see well. It will be performed. Deliverance and dominion. Don't you see that? You see well. It will be performed. It will be done.
I see wonders in your life. And if you see those wonders in your life, you have seen well. You have seen well. It will be done. No more crying. No more weeping. See well. See the promises performed in your life. See the goodness of God performed in your life. See the glory coming from on high into your life, into your family. You see well. And it will be done. You see great possibilities. You see well. It will be done. You repent of sin. You reject every evil. You turn away from every terrible, weakening, sinful habit in your life. And you say, I see forgiveness. You see well. You see well. It will be done. It will be done. I see God's favor. I see God's grace. I see divine ability coming into me so I can do what I've never been able to do before. You see, well, it will be done. No more like a dry rot. Now you're fruitful. Now you are successful. I see well. I see well. Believe it. It is done. Say, support my word in your mouth. I've given you the power and the authority. Root out. Root it out. Every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life, root it out. Pull it down. Pull it down. The Lord has marked you for progress. For success, for achievement, for joy, for victory, for dominion, for total freedom. Anything standing there before you, pull it down. Destroy it. What Christ in you was come to destroy all the works of the devil. Destroy that thing. The word is in your mouth. Throw it down. Throw it down. Don't complain anymore. They will not allow me to succeed. They will not allow me to make it. You decide, you determine. You will make it and you will make it. He has raised you up to build, to plant, to achieve, 
to succeed. The word is right there. Whatever you have asked, know that it is done. Whatever you have rooted out, know it is rooted out. Whatever you have pulled down, know it is pulled down. Whatever you have destroyed, every work of the devil, know it is destroyed whatever you have thrown down no more your body no more your head no more your life no more your family no it is done healing done deliverance done Authority, done. Dominion, done. Fruitfulness, done. Progress, done. Success, done. Health, confirmed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Amen like never before. Amen. The Lord assures you that this night was because of you. Amen. And what he does now will not be a common, average, normal, day-to-day -day miracle. Yeah. A special miracle. Yeah. A special healing. Yeah. A special deliverance. Yeah. Something you never saw it in this fashion. And as we're going back home, that miracle, wonder, will be bubbling inside your heart. Joy, joy, your heart will be full of joy. Your Savior, dear, is ever near. That's the reason why, as you go back tonight, like no other night, there will be joy unspeakable in your heart. If you have prayed for forgiveness, the Lord has forgiven you. If you have prayed for restoration, the Lord has restored you. If you have prayed for victory, I don't want you to be falling into that, falling into that, the Lord has given you victory. If you have prayed for healing, you are supposed to go for maybe operation or whatever and say, I don't want that. I want to spend the money in another way. I am healed. You are healed. You are healed. They say depression, mental problem is almost flying in the air. And that people, because of what is happening here and there, they have depression, they have, uh, you know, brain, whatever. For you, hearing my voice now, 
depression is gone in Jesus' name. They say there's a spirit. It's moving about everywhere. It's pushing this one, pushing this one. Kill yourself. Pastor, I'm hearing that kind of voice too. That voice is silenced forever in Jesus' name. You're no more the man you used to be. You're no more the woman you used to be. You're no more the boy, the girl you used to be. Life has come. Abundant life has come. Strong, strong, healthy life has now come. Confirmation in your life. Where are you? I praise God for you. I say somebody that will never remain the same as, as he ever was. As she ever was. I see somebody who was giving up. And I see you standing at the bottom of that ladder. I see you looking up. I will climb again. I failed in the past. Failure is rooted out. I will succeed again. Everybody, raise up that hand. This is a new day for everyone. Father, in Jesus' name. God of love, God of mercy, God of compassion, God of power. Lord, I bring everyone, young and old, men and women, I bring everyone before you now. Receive them in Jesus' name. Every sin of the past, every failure of the past, forgive them, cleanse them, wash them, blot them out in Jesus' name. Sickness of whatever name, sickness of whatever description, I command, be healed in Jesus' name. Every work of the devil, every curse, every pain, every recurring sickness right now from every life i root it out in jesus name from your lungs that sickness is rooted out from your liver from your kidney that sickness is rooted out from your brain from your blood vessel, that sickness rooted out in Jesus' name. The pain at the neck, the pain at the knee, the pain at the shoulder, rooted out now in Jesus' name. And all kinds of deformity. All kinds of plague running in the family. In the family. Tonight, the night of authority and power. On your life, from your body, all that generational, whatever, I root everything out in Jesus' name. Peace. In your heart, peace in your brain, peace in your system, peace in your thoughts. And as you go home, you go a different man, a different woman, a different boy, a different girl. The failure is turned inside out. From this moment, success will follow you. 
goodness will follow you. Divine energy is injected into you right now in Jesus' name. All those negative, negative, negative things, you couldn't even shake them up. They are protected away from your life. Yeah. Healing, you've got. Yeah. Health, you've got. Yeah. Deliverance, you have got. Yeah. Dominion, you have got. Yeah. Provision, you have got. Yeah. Promotion, you have got. Yeah. And the desire to live and live and live well. You've got it now in Jesus' name. Go back home with joy. Go back home with satisfaction. Go back home with power. The word is now in your mouth. Any day, any time, you see something you don't appreciate in your life, speak the word, heaven will confirm your word. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. It is done. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 